today is going to be a brief introduction to MediaWiki extension development. And leading this will be Andrew Garrett. And then after that, we have collaborative watch list with Kurt Kulak. Andrew Garrett is from Australia. He's a MediaWiki developer at Wikimedia. And without further ado, Andrew. Hello. So I'm doing a brief introduction to MediaWiki extension development. Sorry, I'm very excited about this laser pointer. Um, so uh, basically, the rough format today is I have a brief presentation. I, want, I would like to be interrupted with lots and lots of questions, um, because basically today is mostly about people asking questions and kind of talking about the problems that they're having with extension development. With that said, my, I'm going to have a quick presentation, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what a media ex wiki extension actually looks like, how we code at Wikimedia and for media wiki, um, and I'm going to give a couple of examples of three very common types of media wiki extensions. So, this is kind of what an extension looks like in terms of files. So, a f an extension is a folder or a directory inside the extensions directory of media wiki. Um, actually, can I just find out, has anybody here written an extension before? And how many of you folks know a bit of PHP, have worked with PHP before? Is there anybody who is completely new to PHP and to programming? Okay, a couple of you. Okay. Um, so a MediaWiki installation, it's a directory with lots of files, um, and an extension is one of the directories within that. And it's got a couple of elements. The most important is this one. And this is the extension setup file. Um, by convention, the extension setup file has the same name as the extension, so you notice that this is the same as this. Um, and what that does is, um, I don't know how many of you are comfortable with like, the idea of configuration variables in, uh, in MediaWiki, um, but basically it will set a whole bunch of variables and set up things like hooks, which I'm going to talk about later, special pages, everybody knows what a special page is, yep. um, and you know, classes, those sorts of things. Um, the second most important file in an extension is this one. And that's the internationalization file. Now I'm going to go into how internationalization actually works um, in MediaWiki in just a second. But uh, that is basically about making sure that that, that that extension can be used by people who speak all sorts of languages. Soon enough. Hey, I just realized since there's people in here, it sounds like there's people in here who have never developed anything related to MediaWiki before at all. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So um, I am volunteer development coordinator at the Wikimedia Foundation, and my colleagues and I are happy to help you get started. I mean, this is a great intro, but also uh, I have some notes that I can give you on just like getting started hacking Media Wiki at all, like beginning to understand how things are done, whether it's for the extension or for, or different ways to customize things in case what you actually want to do might not be an extension, it might be uh, a gadget or a user script or, or a hook or something like that. So. Um, you, you go ahead, you know, this will be a very interesting and useful talk, but I can also give you additional information later. Okay. Yes. There will be plenty of links throughout the presentation okay. about where else you can find information about developing for MediaWiki. Um, and in fact, a lot of what I'm going to be saying is just about pointing you to the right documentation for what you want to do. Awesome. So, so you want to create a MediaWiki extension. Where do you start? Um, and the basic way of actually getting the skeleton of a MediaWiki extension together is, of course, you need to create the directory, you need to create the extension setup and the localization files. Those are the two really important files that I talked about before. I'm going to give you a couple of examples in just a second. And then the exciting bit, which is actually making it do something. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of how you can make your extension do something uh, right after I've talked about MediaWiki code starting and that sort of thing. So this is the most basic of the basic MediaWiki extension setup files. Um, and this would be sample extension.php, and it would be in the sample extension directory in the extensions directory of your MediaWiki installation. Um, so the first bit, you need to have a little comment up the top here. Um, good practice for any file, really, and you just need to describe what the extension is, what it does, who wrote it, and all of those sorts of things. In fact, you'll see further down just here under the extension credits, we actually have information, we actually have that information in a machine readable format. And the reason we do that is so that it actually appears on the version page 
Um, has everybody seen the page special version on the MediaWiki installation? Yeah. 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 So this makes sure that your extension appears there. And you notice that this is the general style for most extension setup things. We find this variable, extension credits, and we modify it by adding an extra entry. There should actually be some square brackets here, but anyway. Um, and so you, you, know, you have a couple of keys, you know, the name of your extension, who wrote it. This description message thing, I'm going to get onto in just a second when I talk about internationalization. But basically, it's, uh, it's an identifier for where the software can find the description for this extension in the appropriate language. And then, very important, you need a URL here. And you need to point people to where they can find more information about this extension. Um, and then down the bottom, uh, just before I get onto internationalization, this is, this is telling MediaWiki where it can find the internationalization file for this extension. So again, you have a global variable. You set the sample extension property in that global variable. In this case, the key is the name of the extension. And then you have a directory, or sorry, a file where they can find translations for this extension. So just as an aside, internationalization. Internationalization is more important to MediaWiki than it is to almost any piece of software that I know of. Um, and the reason for that is we're very proud of the fact that Wikipedia is available in over 300 languages. And we're very proud of the fact that MediaWiki is available in over 300 languages. Um, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, uh, Windows is probably only available in about 50 languages. So we're very really? proud. I think so. Yeah. Um, but uh, Me MediaWiki is available in so many languages, and we're very proud of that. Um, so anything that appears to the user needs to be able to be translated into the user's native language. And the way we do that is we break up the interface into little bits. And those little bits are pieces of text that appear to the user. Um, and they're called, we call them messages. Um, and the great thing about the way the infrastructure we have for localization in MediaWiki is that all of your messages within minutes, or sorry, within days of you committing them to Subversion, you'll find that the folks at TranslateWiki.net have actually localized them into hundreds of languages that you've never even heard of. Um, it's quite bizarre and awesome at the same time. Um, so here's what, a look, here's what an internationalization file looks like. Um, you'll notice that it sets this variable dollar sign messages, and that mess that that's like an array structure. Um, so it's like a tree. So you have you know your messages, and then underneath you have English messages, and then underneath that you have this key here, um, and that key is the name of the message, and then it has a value. So in this case, this is the description of the extension, and you notice that just a couple of slides back we used this message name here. Um, and we use it and we give it a value which is what should actually appear to the user. And so depending on the user's language, in this case it will only work for English, but once it's been translated into lots and lots of languages, um, this will appear to the user in their native language. So now that we've covered the extension setup file and the localization file, I want to talk about MediaWiki code style. This is just a bit of an aside, um, just this is the minimum you need to know about how to write uh, for MediaWiki. Um, I've talked about internationalization. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, we need to talk a little bit about how to take input from the web request um, and how to actually spit output back in the content area of um, the MediaWiki installation. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about security, mostly by pointing you to the page that you need to read about it. Um, and I'm also going to talk, well, no, I'm not going to talk about it, but these are the, res these are the other resources that you can use if you do want to uh, learn a little bit more about MediaWiki. In fact, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the specific classes that I'm showing you, but there's actually complete class level documentation. Well, I say complete. Um, there is class level documentation available at this first URL here, and lots of other documentation just available right here. And I don't know if I've got it in my slides, but the best page to be reading for this is uh, How to Become a MediaWiki Hacker, which is on MediaWiki.org. So, localization. I've talked about adding your message already, and you add your message into this array in the, um, in, uh, the internationalization file, but you also need to know how to use that message when you're in your, um, when you're in your software. And this is how you do it. 
Uh, there are a couple of ways, because there are lots of ways that messages can be represented. Uh, messages uh, can have parameters, so you can actually stick in, um, you know, you have just blocked user X, and you can replace X with the name of the user that you blocked. Um, and that information you'll find in the documentation. But basically, this is the most important method, WFMSG. And what that does is it takes the message name, decides what language to translate it in, translates it and gives you the output. And that won't do any HTML escaping or anything like that. Um, you can also pass the wiki text, like in this second one here. Um, and arguments are passed like this. So if your arguments are one and two, for WF message, which returns a message object, you'll use this format. For WFMSG, you'll use this format. This is the simple version. WF message is the complicated version, which will actually return an object. And you can actually call a bunch of methods on that to actually get the information you need. Um, so is everybody kind of comfortable with internationalization? How to say, how to um, localize your software? So, input and output, except we put them in the wrong order. Um, input, uh, we have, for context, you use this global variable. Now, a global variable in PHP is always available. You just need to type global and then the name of the global and your function to get it. Um, and you should use this instead of using, I don't know, some of you in PHP who use PHP before will be familiar with these. You yeah. shouldn't use these because they, uh, they have some security issues associated with them. No, Sorry. no, no. No? OK. Um, and uh, yes, feel free to come in. Hello, welcome. Hi. Um, and so what we should do instead is use this global variable here, which has methods like get found, get check, get int. Um, these get the input, uh, like the get, the post, and the cookie variables. Um, in, in a number of formats or with a, num with a number of sets of pre-processing. Uh, if you want full information about these methods, I'm not going to go into full detail about them, but it is a web request object, and so you can just look up web request in that last level documentation. Now, don't worry if you get, didn't get the link down, my slides will actually be available, you'll just be able to click on the link. Um, so that's how to do your input. Once you've done that, you need to be able to send out some output. And in that, we have an output page object. And that, uh, the standard one is dollar sign wg out. The most important method is add HTML. And that'll just add the HTML you pass to it to the bottom of the content area. Um, and uh, if you want more information about the output page methods, there are a bunch of things. Like you can have JavaScript and CSS, you can have resource modules, you can set the caching policy, all of those sorts of things. You can just look at the class documentation. If you want help finding that, then let me know. Okay. Uh, security. Basically, the main thing with security is you want to read this page here. This page, I believe Tim here wrote it, um, and it, it details all of the common pitfalls and some of the less common pitfalls when you're writing code for MediaWiki. Um, if you're writing code for MediaWiki and you want to have to put it on the media, or if you want Code, if you want your media wiki code to be secure, you should have read this page and you should follow the recommendations on there. With that said, there are two main issues here, which I've written kind of funny, but anyway. The first one is cross-site cross scripting. Do, is there anybody here who doesn't know what cross-site scripting is? Yes? Okay, so are you comfortable with the idea? Um, uh, so when, you're, when you are outputting HTML, um, you would sometimes need to put user input in that HTML. Um, but sometimes, excuse me, sometimes that user input will itself contain HTML. Do you understand that? Yeah, but if you allow any user to put HTML on the page, then it can include script tags and all that sort of thing. So the way to get around that is uh, we have two methods in MediaWiki. The first is to use the PHP inbuilt uh, function, which is HTML special cards. Do you know about that, or? Please just continue. OK, sure. Um, and the second way to deal with that um, is we actually have a class called HTML in MediaWiki. And uh, that class will do a lot of this escaping for you um, if you use the right functions. If you want to know a little bit more about using the HTML classes, um, there's documentation available. 
The second thing, I should have written SQL injection here, but instead I wrote database wrappers, um, because data, database wrappers is the solution. Um, and basically, it's the same issue with SQL. Um, sometimes you want to put user input into your SQL statements, but user input can contain SQL to do all sorts of nasty things. So what you need to do is you need to escape it. However, in MediaWiki, we don't want uh, we don't want people to write their own SQL statements outright, generally speaking, because it's too hard to verify. So we actually have a class called database, and that database class you can get. Uh, I should have this in my slide. But there's actually a function called wfgetdb, which will get uh, the appropriate database class for you. And it has a whole bunch of methods like select, insert, update, delete, all of those sorts of things. And you can just call those methods if you want to uh, use a database, if you want to read a database. So that's, those are the two main issues that we find in terms of security. Um, but as I say, uh, don't rely on my, my explanations of these things read this page here, and it will tell you all you need to know about how to write secure extensions. OK, so now that the less fun part about our MediaWiki coding style is over, I'm just going to go into a couple of examples of three very common types of MediaWiki extensions. Um, the simplest, and in fact, this was my first, my very first work on MediaWiki was to create a special page. And uh, this, um, so you can create special page extensions. Um, do people know what special pages are here? Everybody's comfortable with that? Cool. Of course. Um, so a special page is a page that you go to on MediaWiki which will do something. So uh, contributions, do you know the contributions page? Okay. Um, when you click on user contributions. So that's a special page. Um, so you, the actual URL is special contributions slash whatever. And it's generated by the software. Um, yeah, it's not an article. Yeah. Um, the second thing is how to add your own things to Wikimarker. Um, so I'm going to talk about you know, how to add your own parser functions and tag extensions. I'm going to go into what those are uh, a little bit later. Um, and then uh, a bit more of an advanced topic. That's actually in the middle. I've got this in the wrong order. Um, but a bit of a more advanced topic is hooking events. And this allows you to customize quite deep down what MediaWiki does in certain circumstances. In this case, I'm going to explain the concept and give a very quick example because there are lots of things that you can do with books and it's a bit beyond the scope of the presentation. Since it's supposed to be a brief introduction. Um, OK, so a special page. Um, this is where we start. This is what you would start with when you start to write a special page. Um, so this is a class. Um, each special page has its own class. You'll notice that the special page class is actually in its own file. Um, and the, that's just so that our code is a little bit split up. It's easy to find things, and things load reasonably quickly. Um, and uh, this, we have a naming convention. If your special page is called my extension, then your special page file and your special page class will be special my extension, like this. Um, so you'll notice um, that you have overrided the constructor here, and you just call the parents constructor with a single argument with the name of the special page. Um, you'll notice that we've overridden the execute function, and the execute function is basically the guts of your special page. And so this is where you will start reading from WG request. This is where you start writing things out with WG out. Um, and you'll do, you'll do what, basically whatever it is that you want your special page to do, uh, basically in the order that you want it to be displayed. Um, so this is our sample special page. We've created our class. We've overridden the appropriate methods. Now what we need to do is actually tell MediaWiki that this special page exists. Um, and we do that in two parts, just at the bottom. This is our sample uh, extension file that we had before. We just added these two lines just down the bottom here. Um, the first thing tells MediaWiki that that class that we've created actually exists. And so here, we've, uh, again, we're setting a global variable. The global variable is called WG Autoload Classes. Um, and the key is the name of the class. In this case, special my extension, the standard name for a special page class. And then here we have a relative path. It's relative because we've prefixed it with the with the path of this file here to the extent to the class file that implements that special page. 
And once you've done that, then you can actually register the special page with me. Um, so uh, that's in the WG special pages. The key is the name of the special page. The value is the class that implements it. Uh, and you'll notice, uh, you'll notice that um, we use this auto loader thing. So basically what that is, is when MediaWiki uh, doesn't know where to find a class, it can look in here and it will know where to find that particular class. And that's a MediaWiki particular thing. Okay. So at yes. that point, you would have the special page will be registered and accessible? Yes. So that's all you need to do to create a special page once you've got your extension all set up. Are we all good with special pages? Just Maybe I kind of missed it, but if I, where would we actually make the output if I want to? So, um, this is where you actually do the output, right here. So, if you wanted to add some output, you would type dollar sign wg out and you would call the add html method on it. Okay. And that would add, and that, would add that to the content area. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, I'm going to do a brief aside on hooks because you need hooks to do to do spec to do extending wiki markup. Um, so basically, every now and then, media wiki will get to a particular junction in code. It will get to a critical point in the processing, and it will. Uh, and th at those points, uh, we want me we want media wiki extensions to be able to customize media wiki's behavior. Um, and so media wiki will call a hook, and at that hook point. Any extensions that are interested in this particular hook, um, their named places in the code, uh, will have the opportunity to do their own processing and then potentially to change the way that MediaWiki does its processing. Um, there's a big list of the hooks that we have available right at this URL here. Um, and if you want to, uh, and some of the examples of the hooks that we have is we have a hook to modify the tab tabs that appear at the top of the page. We have a hook to modify uh, whether or not somebody's allowed to save an article, whether or not somebody's allowed to read an article, all of those sorts of junctions in code where we might want extensions. I keep doing that. Okay. Excuse me, I should put this down. Um, so, uh, yeah, anywhere where you want media, we can be able to change the way it's processing. We will have a hook. Find a full list here. Um, and basically, the way, the way you would uh, use a hook is you would register your hook in, surprisingly enough, a global variable, aptly named WG hooks, and you would actually create a, a function that handles that hook. So, here's an example. I've taken the uh, I've taken the file we were using before, and basically what this little mini extension does, besides creates our little special page here, is it actually every time somebody logs in. It says down the bottom, you're all logged in. Now you'll notice I've got a little, a little comment here. This, mess, this thing here should actually be in a message. Um, but I haven't done that in this particular case just because I wanted to keep it all, on one, all in one file. So uh, yeah, so up here we've got, we've registered in the WG books. So we have the key, which is the name of the hook. You can find a list of the hook names in the, uh, in the previous slide. Uh, add a link. Um, the value is actually an array. This, these square brackets are very important. And then in the array, you have a list of functions that are that are called for that hook. Um, and then in our hook, uh, notice you always need to return true or false, and that decides whether processing continues or not. And uh, you can do your you can do your stuff here. This particular hook passes two parameters. The first is a user object, the user that's just logged in. The second is, you'll notice the little ampersand. Do people know about passing by reference? Are people familiar with that concept? Yeah, okay. So uh, the ampersand means that you can actually change this HTML that gets injected at the bottom of the edit form. Um, and in, case, in this case, what we've done with it is we've actually appended this little el element to the bottom. Notice before I was talking about cross-site scripting and the, the best ways to avoid them are using this HTML class. This is how you would actually use the HTML class. First parameter is the type of element that you're trying to create, in this case, a P, a paragraph element. Um, null is what we've passed for the attributes. It's actually an associative array. 
And the third parameter is actually just the text or the HTML to put in the middle of it. So that's how you use a hook. Last but certainly not least, I'm going to talk a little bit about extending wiki markup. Uh, so the first, you actually use a hook in extending wiki markup, which is why I talked about hooks first. Um, the hook in question this time is actually called parser first call init, um, which I think Tim created that hook. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, this is when the parser is getting set up, um, and you need to you need to be able to make modifications to it. So there are two functions that you call here. You can look up the full documentation for them um, later on, but I'm going to give a quick example of them. Um, they're set function hook and set hook. Um, but the really important thing that I want to talk about is the two. Sorry, was that a handle? No, no, no. no, it's all right. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Gotcha. Um, that's all right. Okay, so the two standard ways that you can extend the media wiki markup, there are lots of other ways, but I'm not going to talk about them because they're very advanced topics. But the two standard ways are tags and parser functions. Now, uh, tags are XML-like tags that you can put in your wiki text. Um, and a parser function, it, it looks a bit like a template. Um, so you have you know, your, your two curly braces, and then you have a hatch. In fact, I'll show you an example. Um, so this this would be a this would be a parser function. That's what it looks like, and you will stick that in the wiki text. Um, and the output of that is actually HTML. Is there, this is a handle. Sorry, is there a difference between um, just from the editor point of view, uh, magic words that are parser functions or magic words? Is there a distinction between the ones that give the hash and the ones that don't? Um, no. So basically, the hashes are newer ones. We decided at some point that we wanted to that we wanted to add hashes to them. Uh, but yeah, the main difference between tag functions and parser functions is that parser functions usually return wiki text. Tags usually return HTML. Um, yes. So I'll talk about magic words in a second. And um, since the person who invented the name for that is in the room. Uh, so basically, um, you'll notice before all of the stuff, after all of the stuff we've done before, um, we, we use another hook, and you notice that we did that in exactly the same way as we did before. You add to the WG hooks variable, and our hook will just call this function on the parser. Notice that the parser is passed as an argument to pass the first call in it, and you call set function hook. This first variable is the name of the parser function. That's not actually what's going to appear in the wiki text. That's where magic words come in, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, this is the function that actually handles that parser function. And this is for flags, which, uh, for the purposes of this, just set that to zero. Um, and then you actually need a function to implement this parser function. And in this case, you have, as your parameters to this function, this function gets called whenever somebody uses this parser function and it determines the output. The parameters are the parser, which is just a parser object. If you want to know more about the parser object, uh, look back at uh, the class level documentation that I pointed you to. Um, and these are the arguments. Now, the arguments come here, and they're separated by pipes. So uh, yes, in this case, what our function does it's very simple, it just reverses the string. It put, gives you the string in reverse order. So it looks a bit like this. Um, one of the other things that you need to deal with, sorry, was that a hand? Or, no, okay. Um, it's a bit confusing what you just showed us. Uh, could you go back for a second? Maybe yes. I mean, the, the code from before, yeah. Uh, so we have here two functions which you have. Is one of them like a callback and the other one is the actual thing which happens or register? Um, so the callback actually is the thing that happens. So this um, this is our callback. This is what actually happens when you yeah, use yeah, the parser function. This is also a callback. All books are callbacks. But this actually happens when the parser is first set up. So when um, so we actually have a parser object. Which is, um, which is used to convert wiki text into HTML. And this parser object um, is set up when it's needed. So um, when this parser object is actually set up, what we need to do is we need to modify it just a little bit by giving it one extra parser function. 
and that's what this line of code does here. Now is the okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes much more sense now. Is the do I do we know uh, who will be called first, who will be called second if more than one extension wants to use this uh, Okay, so in you should not uh, you should not generally rely on the order in which books are called because it might change in the future. At the moment, it's the order in which the extensions are loaded in local settings.php. But uh, you shouldn't rely on it, and hopefully you don't need to. If MediaWiki's doing its job right. Does that make sense? Kind of, but I saw that some extensions uh, modify the output of others, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like that's reference that's back citations. Right. If you've, got, if you've got something you want to change, which all different, change things, um, say, so you've got a bad working function, yeah. you say, well, I always want this to be last because somebody could write something that an earlier part of the function would clearly create the bad word. Okay, the thing is that it's not quite done in that order. It's actually done, um, it's done from the bottom up. So uh, in, if you're talking about wiki text, then the parser, fun the parser functions will be done first and the, the wiki text will be generated. And then after the wiki text has been generated, it'll be run through the bad word filter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to think about it more. Okay, if you're writing, it depends on how you write, write the bad word filter. Yeah. Uh, so something yeah. about uh, when extensions extend other extensions, um, then the first extension should probably have a hook that the other extension can hook into rather than trying to modify the hook that was already there. Yeah. Yes. Um, so generally speaking, yeah, extensions can extend other extensions, but that would probably end up being an advanced problem. Yeah. 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 Are we all happy with that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Um, so, uh, yes. Magic words. This is an example of why you should never under any circumstances allow an engineer to name things. Uh, so a magic word is basically, as the name implies, text that you put in wiki text um, that makes some sort of magic happen. In this case, it, uh, in this case you are finding myfunk, which is the name of the parser function that we've defined just here. And we're giving it a, uh, we're giving it a name in English. You can also give it a French, uh, you can also give it a French name by doing the same, except replacing this with fr and this with, you know, mon fonction. Um, but yeah, this is what you would also add to this internationalization file. And this is one of the reasons why that internationalization file is so important. Um, so once, once you've done all of those things, you have your parser function. And if you stick this in wiki text, then you'll end up getting this output. So I'm done. Uh, I'm interested in problems that people are having with extensions, or questions that people have about extensions, all of those sorts of things. I think we have about 10 minutes, uh, Daniel said, so fire away if you have any questions or problems. Yes? So, so this may be a complete aside, but, but talking about extensions modifying other extensions, in uh, as we operate, or just as, let's say, the Wikipedia version of the MediaWiki distribution operates, what does the dependency tree look like for this? For extensions, like do we really have extensions that are on MediaWiki that other extensions are intimately relying on them, or it, is it is it just a, a tree rather than a forest? It is very rare for one extension to rely on another extension. Central, it's central, one or two that yeah, do central. yeah, um, yeah. Like Tim says, a couple of extensions rely on central, auth, but um, not necessarily rely on either. Just take advantage of central auth if it's there. Other questions? Yes, up the back there. As long as we're talking about hooks, is, 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 hooks the, is creating your own hooks the best way to avoid uh, hacking up the mean source code when there's no other way to do what you need to do? Yes. Is there something else that we should be doing? Should we want logging for our hook to be added? So Generally speaking, yeah, if you have the access to add the hook, um, you should just add it yourself and see if somebody reverts you. Um, <laughs> I, I can see Tim. Uh, looking away. <laughs> well, yeah, there already are so many great ones. The problem with hooks is you end up with uh, backwards compatibility issues. Like I, I, I rewrote the preferences system about two years ago, and they had a hook for adding HTML to the preferences page. They had a hook for you know 
uh, reading preferences from the request. They had a hook for this, they had a hook for that. And I had to deprecate all of those hooks because I built it around the system that actually uh, abstracted all of that. And all you needed to do was just add a preference and give it a data type. Um, so yeah, the main problem with adding new hooks is we end up having to support them. But yes, if you want, if you want to avoid hacking at MediaWiki uh, for your extension, then yes, you should add a hook. Or you, yeah. Or at least, if you're going to hack MediaWiki, add in, hack it by adding in a hook rather than just by copying and pasting your code into MediaWiki. Questions? Anything else? Are we all good? Excellent. Um, I think I have. Did Sumina pass out a couple of pieces of paper about uh, how to become a MediaWiki hacker? I had a whole bunch of details. Is it, have people got those? Excellent. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there three more? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, she probably has some more. I have some in my bag. Yes. If you want to harass me afterwards. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, is Kurt here? What? You're Kurt? All right, so. Everyone, now we have a very special treat. The president and vice president of Wikimedia Austria are here. I know this is uh, something no one could have prepared for. Uh, we have Kurt and Christoph, and they're going to rocket to us about collaborative watch list. And I am just as excited as you are to learn what that is. Christoph. Uh, I'm, uh, we try, I'm trying to set up my presentation because uh, this was uh, shared in time. So uh, just a few minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm introducing an extension we wrote, uh, uh, we, we have done in Wikimedia Austria. We have our developer here, that's uh, Florian. Uh, and I'm going to explain uh, what our extension does. Uh, in a nutshell, it's a multiplayer watch list. Yeah? And this also. Can you try to, to speak in the microphone? Yes. So, no, is that side? Somebody is learning how to do hip hop. Which name's? I'm taking uh, it. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, what we did is we created a watch list for more users. And uh, here's the old watch list model. It's. Uh, hmm? Okay, now I'm running around here. Uh, <laughs> and this is the old uh, watch list model. Uh, I've uh, called it single player watch list because one person can watch one article. Uh, so there is no communications between users. Yeah? Uh, if uh, five people have one article on their watch list, uh, they uh, see each other's edits. Yeah? So uh, there is no uh, principle of trust. You you can you know users in your Wikipedia if you're writing, and you trust them. So if they change something in an article, yeah, you would say, yeah, it's okay because I know him and I'm sure that he did a good thing. Yeah, and this is a colleague, not a yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he edits uh, on the same topic as me. Yeah, so uh, I can trust him and. Uh, with the old watch list or the, the normal watch list, is it, it isn't possible uh, to create some web of trust, I say, yeah? So everyone sees every edit, uh, and this can be uh, a rather tedious task to uh, go through, shift all to, uh, to the edits and, and uh, always see the same. Yeah, every edit is watched by several people. Uh, this is here. If you have one article, everyone uh, sees 
uh, every change from every user, not just from uh, users you're interested in. Yeah? You see uh, every change uh, from colleague, as I said. So, and what we did uh, is we created an extension, a collaborative watch list. Uh, it's basically it's a multiplayer watch list. You can have a list of trusted users, uh, and you don't see the edits. And this is essentially a good thing because these are trusted users. So this is the scheme here. You have, uh, and Kurt is going to talk about this uh, more in detail. You have an admin who created a list. He adds his users, and he can also add tags, watch categories, and so on. Uh, but in principle, is you have uh, these users who share the same watch list and the same could, can could be the same topics, for example. Uh, biology articles or articles about insects and if someone from this user base changes an article the others won't see that won't see it and uh, this allows you to uh, use a watch list more effectively Okay, now I'll explain the idea a little bit in detail. Um, the advantages of our, our collaborative watch list, uh, it uh, reduces redundancies since uh, several people only have to watch one single watch list. And if there is one editor who says, okay, I think this edit is okay, he clicks a button and the edit is, is tagged as okay, and the others uh, don't have to, to check it again. So they do the work only once and not several times like it's done uh, nowadays. Uh, that leads to the to a quality improvement since uh, you can um, check more uh, more articles in the same time with all those redundancies. Uh, there is another big advantage. It is actually uh, quite similar to the to the um, existing watch list. There are only some additional features, but it looks like the normal watch list you are used to use. Um, the, the coverage uh, should be uh, in more effective since you can watch whole categories and whole category trees. So you say I want to watch every chemistry article with my, with my mates, and you check every single edit in, within this whole category tree. So you don't miss a single edit as it is probably done uh, right now, since you don't know how many people are watching all those articles. You just think it will be okay about, uh, because of the wiki uh, principles. Excuse me, could you, could you make it like uh, more than just a category, but a, like a combination and... A yeah, you can, I'll tell you about that later, but you can add as uh, articles or different categories as you want. And you can also uh, subtract categories. For example, you want to have uh, uh, every country of the world. So there could be a category of countries. But I don't want to have, uh, I don't, let's say, America. And you just put minus uh, category America, so you, you watch all the rest. That's possible. Um, that leads to more motivation uh, for working with this, with this tool and uh, improvement in the quality. OK, so how does it work? Um, first thing is um, you define an, an, an article range. That means you take, for example, a category, a, a quite high category, high up in the tree. So let's say um, tree of life, the uh, animals, yeah? And you, you watch all categories down the tree until you reach the end. Um, you can also, um, as I just said, um, add single articles or subtract single articles for any reason you want. Uh, the second thing is you uh, define the user group. There is always one beginning user, uh, the, the list admin or list owner, who adds other users. And he can also add other uh, list admins and say, OK, this is, these are all my trusted friends, for example, in a, in a um, in a wiki project, all the members of the wiki project, or whatever. Um, and there is a, a third level, 
there's a trusted users best explained uh, uh, with the bots. So you don't have to check bot edits. You can say, okay, these bots, I don't want to see the edits of these bots, and you add them to this list. Or let's say there are several uh, users, normal human users, who just add interwiki links and who are trusted, but they don't uh, contribute to your actual list. You can add them too. So just to, to save time and work. For, yeah. Okay, there, there are no restrictions uh, in, in those lists, so everyone uh, can uh, create his own list, and there, there is no need for, for defining um, the, the user rights for only admins can, can create a list, etc. Everyone can do it by their own, and it's the same as you do it now with your watch list. Uh, that means, of course, there will be um, more trusted groups like those of the wiki projects, for example. Those, those editors will have the more, more important group and they will probably check, check the, all the edits more carefully and perhaps will revert some edits others won't, etc. But it's a free process, so you, there is no restriction. So just one thing, if I wanted to be, I don't know, to have my own, because you're saying this is now owned by the group or is there one person who is the... You can define it. You start with one person, you, you say you, I want to create a, a group and you, you start with your list and after that you can, you can choose if you add other, other users or other uh, list owners. I rephrase it a little bit. Uh, if this gentleman and I who appears but he is interested in statistics I'm interested in linguistics and we have a third thing which we are sharing. We could have uh, one list which we share and some other lists. If right, you could have ten, now, 10 different lists and you can, sh you can show them all in one window or you just show one of those lists as you like. Okay. It's completely um, um, flexible as you like. Okay, this is, I said that is. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, you have to agree on tags, so you define your your own tags as you like. Yeah. For example, you can you can give a, you can give a, an A, a grades A to, to to F or whatever, or just uh, say edit OK, etc. As you like, you could add hundred tags if you want. Yeah. Um, with those tags, you, you, you get your watch list, and you have, uh, like it's, it's now, you have your, your, your buttons, and you see who, um, who did the edit when, and you could revert it immediately. And if you want to set the tag, you just hook, hook a small, um, I've got a, the box, a checkbox, and um, you set the tags uh, for all those edits are okay, and you press one button, and can, you can check uh, 10 edits with, within one action. You can also add a comment to, to, to every action. So it is possible to add, um, like it's shown here, you can add a, a second opinion tag. So you probably add the second opinion tag and, and tell them, yeah, uh, it, this sounds doubtful, but I don't know. And another, and then another user will see that and he will see, okay, mm, yes or no, and he will say, okay, it's okay, and he will change the tag to uh, edit okay, or he will revert the edit. This is the, the ultimate thing. It, this works the same as it is now in the, in the normal watch list. You have the button for undoing an edit. Okay. Um, this is what it is now. Uh, we have an outlook. Um, since the, the watch list uh, will cover only uh, recent changes, new recent edits from the, from the day you start the, the special page, of course the old articles and the old entries they won't be listed. So it would be it would be uh, cool if also there is a feature to to check existing articles if they are okay or not, as it is now done in the English language Wikipedia with the, with the um, grade systems to, to from, from 
um, from as the, 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 the colors, you know, on the discussion page, the, this is a staff article of high importance. You can add that too, yeah, in this in the system. Uh, the second is uh, it would be cool to define um, sublists for big groups of users who, who are watching big uh, category trees. So you say there are the biologists who have their whole tree of life within the list. And of course, there would be a lot of edits a day. And you, you probably are the experts in, in, expert in checking birds. And you don't want to see the, the other edits of, of mammals or insects or whatever. That you can say, I want to, I want to have the, the whole list. Or this is just one list. But I, don't, I only want to see edits within a subcategory. So you can probably choose your special topics. But without having your own list. Okay, so um, now we can show you uh, how it looks like on our test wiki, just to, to have an impression. And after that, I think we could start the discussion. This is um, this is our test wiki, and it looks uh, like the normal watch list. Um, so, okay, as you, this is the this is the the settings part of the of the collaborative watch list. You can you can add the categories or the articles here and define the users, but the rest is actually as it is shown now on the normal watch list. At, and you have here your, your checkbox. You can say, OK, this edit is, this is vandalism. I would undo it. Or this edit is, is OK. I would, I would set the, the hook and define the tag. In this case, edit is OK. Probably add the content, uh, a comment and set, set tag. And you could do it for a list of articles. After that, you can define. You see, define. You see here, hide tags, edit OK. So you only see the non-checked articles. So it will disappear if you check it as OK. And as I said before, you can add 100 different tags if you want, and you choose it here, and, and you can define as you as you like. And you can also um, define the, the shown tags. So there could also be option to show every every edit, even if they are already trusted as if you, as you like. Uh, okay, so. yeah. okay, what I've done here is uh, we have a user here, 18686, who is not on the watch list. Yeah, this this is live. It, it's test dot wikimedia dot at. Yeah, it's uh, the Alemannic uh, language, so uh, it was, it was probably. It was, uh, I just took it because it was a wiki with uh, a decent amount of articles, but small enough to make a uh, fast import. Yeah, uh, I, I must say, uh, Manuel tried uh, two days to import the English Wikipedia, and uh, <laughs> it was a very uh, complicated task. More than, uh, more than a week. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and what we have seen, uh, what we see here is uh, he is not in the watched users group, and so uh, this edit appears here. If someone would be in this uh, watch list, you won't see that. Uh, you could see that if uh, he added a tag or a comment, but if he just uh, uh, did, un uh, did undo uh, vandalism, you wouldn't see that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you want, uh, you can try it. You probably won't understand the language. I uh, don't do it either. The only one who understands this is Manuel. So, <laughs> uh, but it's also in English. yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> we have no, we have an English copy. Uh, maybe we could set something up in, uh, let's say, a few months. But what we are trying to achieve now is. Um, to get this extension working on a small language Wikipedia. 
Uh, it could be the elementic one, it could be the uh, Bavarian one, yeah? but we need to get it on a small language to try it out. How does it uh, play together with MediaWiki, database, and, uh, and so on, yeah? Okay, uh, okay, any questions now? What about performance? Uh, performance, uh, I think Florian should talk as you can about probably that. Imagine, um, as you can probably imagine, parsing the, or actually constructing the recursive tree for, for the categories is quite slow on the live system because categories are usually nested very deep. So that will be a problem on, on the bigger Wikipedias like English, German and so on. And uh, we're working together with uh, Daniel Kitzer. He's, uh, he's doing a project on, on creating a graph of all the categories, which we might want to use. And currently what we have is we simply have a, a cache on Namcash daemon. So we cache basically the name of a category and all its subcategory names, including the IDs. So there is a, it's, it's meant to be run on a bigger project. But we have no experience yet, so that's something to be done. Do you know how the category of some other category? That's how the tree is represented in, in SQL. So it's 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 <laughs> Is an uh, alternative one which might actually be a lot faster for this language. What do you mean with nested sets in the term? I sent you a link better than to, to explain right now. But uh, too complicated for, <laughs> for, for a minute, yeah. Maybe we can have a chat later. Yeah. Yeah. So if there are no more questions, uh, I would like to, to start the discussion. Oh, okay. Okay, how do you install this um, this thing that you I mean we're saying this in any Wikipedia no. and start using it, how do we let's say we have Wikipedia. We have to upload it in the uh, you guys do it or you guys have to ask the yeah, right now it's running on a test wiki okay. of, of ourselves, uh, but that's because of, of we have to convince uh, the Wikimedia Foundation that this is a cool stuff yeah. and we can try it on a, on, a, on a wiki. So it's not because it's not finished, it's just because we have to get the approval that we can try it on a small wiki first. Okay. And probably the next step will be if it's done really working and it's accepted, <laughs> that we put it on every so wiki. Yeah, we drop it and then you try and install the wiki and after that you can do yeah. it. Okay. Uh, you can add it also on the SVN, uh, media.org, or uh, mediawiki.org, and it's also on the MediaWiki page. Uh, MediaWiki.org, in the extension list, uh, you can find it, and Sorry. the code is available. Okay, whenever it's available in for small wikis, uh, can we get it being found or anything? I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like it. No. It's not mine. Nice. Oh, and just, just do it for us. <laughs> what do you want to share? I mean, you can the, the link. Like the the link is very cool. So it's right now available for everyone. If, if you want to use it for your own wiki, you can just copy it from the ESPN wiki. But the question, sorry, the question was, would, yeah, where, where would you update the, the information when, once you get the testing started on some small layer? Yeah. Would it be updated on the category page? Sorry, on the yeah, yeah. page? Yeah. It, it would be updated on the media wiki page. Okay. The so we're trying to collect the information there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as we, we already checked it in, in the SVN, we have a code review that's uh, on the process by Rowan. I hope I get the name right. <laughs> so yeah. we are really trying to get them accepted because we yeah. think it's a good idea and uh, uh, practically it's, it's working. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. So let's discuss about this. Do you think it's a good idea, or do you think do you have any uh, additional um, things you would like to see in this in this extension, or just tell us in the comments? Uh, of blacklisting or waitlisting your system horizon. For example, you can request uh, external users to your website to list and it's possible of waitlisting them. You can, yeah, you can, you can set every user you like on the trusted um, um, trusted editor status. This is one of the three uh, uh, of the three um, types of. of of users in this thing, and you say, okay, I trust this English language user because he's setting interview keys, and uh, on default, his edits are not shown. Uh, there is no, there is no distrust of users, so there is no blacklist of users. Just a whitelist, just the whitelist yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you have an edit made to an article on one of these collaborative watch lists by someone who is not in the, in you know, not one of the trusted users, yeah. and then that edit is reverted. By a trusted user, and you load the watch list after those two actions occur. What do you see? You, as, it's, as it is shown now in the normal watch list, you see. Um, can, you, can you switch to the, to the watch list? Uh, you see, if you have this uh, Java thing here, and this is the, the normal watch list. You can open it up, and you see all the edits within uh, within one day, for example, and. You see that the, the recent one, the recent one was the revert, and, you, and normally it would be if you if you define the uh, this is a trusted user or a list user, it would it wouldn't be shown since uh, it's set on default. The, the, the last edit is uh, is okay, it wouldn't be shown. But you could also set the hook and say okay, I trust this edit, and it's okay, and you don't have to bother about the older edits. It's just on the the, the, the last edit. But you see all the edits, so you can think about what happened on this day and say, no, okay, the last one is bad, the other one is good. I have to revert something, and then it would be it would, would be checked as okay, and you would see it. So I, I guess what you would see when you loaded up the page the first time, yeah, would would be the second edit. No, or, sorry, would be the first edit because it's an untrusted user. Um, or would you not? Because I'm not understanding what you would see. No, it's, 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 uh, actually, it's like the normal, uh, like the normal watch list. You see all the edits. Yeah. But if the last one is one of the trusted users, the last one has to be okay. So the the the, the, the tag would be set on this this edit is okay on default, and it wouldn't be shown. If you if you hook it here as tags on default, it works on works on tags. You don't use tags. You can. Uh, so, 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 so on default, you, just, you set the tag and don't yeah. show the, the and it's a so trusted user. Show it or don't show it. So, yeah. uh, a similar issue going to mention is also in the, in, in the normal default viewing watch list. Yeah. Uh, if you play high box and the last edit was made by a bot, you don't see the previous edit. This is an issue uh, basically in core, and I think yeah. if that will be solved, it would automatically be solved in your system. <laughs> That's. That's a, that's a bad thing, and that's right. That's why I don't click the hook on, on the normal uh, uh, watch list. But you would you would you would see the the edits of, of the day here, and actually you have to trust that the last if the last uh, editor was one of the trusted editors or one of the list uh, users that he checked the edit what was did before within the same day. So. This is a kind of bypass of this problem. It wouldn't be not shown. It would be uh, shown as okay, but you wouldn't see it because of, of the you said on default you won't you won't uh, see the those edits. But of course you can also uh, uh, just put away those hooks like it's, it's here now, so you would see every single edit as it is right now on the normal watch list. Okay. So I have uh, three three matters. I start with the first. Uh, which, generic, 
a little bit different than the uh, normal uh, uh, Wikipedia projects. Uh, in that case, uh, we are more interested in the... Uh, should I talk to tonight? With the uh, uh, Wiktionary, uh, on the same page we have uh, entries from different languages and uh, each editor is, is really interested in edits in his language. Could it be, could, could it be made, uh, your, could there be added an option to watch a section and not a whole page? I would, I would say you would do that like um, I showed before with the second opinion uh, tag. You can define any tag you want. So you could say, define a tag, uh, primary language of I don't know, English OK. So you just hook on English OK and somebody else has to check something with this, with this edit in French, for example. Or you can, do, you can, you can set the tag with the comment, I checked the English. English is okay, so somebody else has to check the rest. So the other the other list users would see you've checked the English English language edit, and uh, somebody has to, to do the rest. That's possible. Well, each, each edit is just one language, so I just be interested in seeing okay. uh, the section. Okay, uh, okay, I understand. That, that's quite difficult. I think that's probably that's not uh, since it is a special thing of of Wiktionary, yeah. So. Yeah. We, re we now rely on the fact that those list users know what they are doing with the edit they are checking and if they don't know it, they leave it. So somebody has to do it. But it's not possible to split one single edit or to split... Uh, no, each edit is always on one language. Well, yeah. I think that you're right, each edit is on one language section of the page. Okay, so you... Maybe, maybe it is possible to use it. It yeah. could be probably possible, but I don't know if it is. Uh, I don't think so. Check the edits are just on one page. They are not edits on sections. The section is just defined by the parser, so you've got one page which is stored as a whole, but you cannot, define, you cannot easily see that an edit just edited one section instead of the whole page. If uh, have to do extra. If we had the maybe added the gadget, I mean, for the for the editor, that it would I don't know put a tag for each section. Would that be possible that you use your test tag? But there would be probably two edits, one in the English language and one in the other language, right? There wouldn't be one edit who is who edit the English part. This, this would, no, this would be separate edits. Separate. Separate, separate editors. You could you could you could just tag one of those edits. With a with a with a tag which is not uh, by default being hired after you set it. Okay. So you could set there. I checked English as I said before. Yeah. yeah. And it would, would still be shown. And so the other edit will also be shown. And somebody else could check this other edit. Okay. And then after afterwards, somebody could could put uh, put the uh, okay everything checked everything okay and then it's gone. This could be possible. This okay. is a. Uh, okay. We have to look into this. Yeah. Uh, so second issue, it's, I hear that there is something called the Trust Project, which is uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, related to anti, anti we, have, we saw a demo here yesterday of something to do with this, where they are showing uh, who, is, who, who made uh, which part of the page. Yeah. No, this, this, this system just relies on the normal wiki principles, so it's just uh, as it is now, you rely on the text with it in the total, so there is no, no trusted uh, thing inside the year. Okay. So you were asking if you, we had any other ideas. Yeah. So it seems to be kind of logical that if somebody already did most of the edits, uh, and I don't even know them, and they do another couple of edits, maybe it's a low priority. Uh, yeah, you could probably, for example, show that it, it is the, the user who created the article, etc. This is possible, but at the moment, not. not okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there was a question here. Or? Yeah, it does seem useful. Yeah. Thinking about how these things are implemented as a new person in the context of the first talk. Yeah. Then, uh, how much new code is there? in the extension and did you use, did you make a special page, did you add books? Okay, so this is probably something Ferrari is going to answer. So basically it's a special page. 
most of the code is within that special page. And since it's very similar to the normal watch list, the code is based on the on the normal watch list. I've tried to use as much code as possible without modifying core too much. Um, but it still duplicates a bit of the old watch list, of course. Because um, the current state of the watch list special page is it's quite long code within one function. Um, I would have had to refactor that whole thing before being able to reuse code from it. So it's currently yeah, copy to some to some parts. How I started developing was simply yeah, taking a copy of the usual special watch list page and then building on top of it. Now, is there any relation to the database or change the organization database and track that? Yeah, of course. You have to store the relations between the tags because the tags are set on the page it's stored, sorry, on the edit itself. And you have to create a relation between the tag and the list. So you've got um, four tables. One table is for the users, one is for the tags, one is for the categories. Five, five tables. One is for the list itself, and one is for the relation between the tags and the list. Okay. Any suggestions? Oh? Would you use it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So probably you would also support us for implementing uh, because we have set up a, a little. Uh, how say that? Um, we set up a little uh, petition link because uh, it's here. <laughs> We need to get uh, positive to votes. Get yes. Opinions, positive votes, uh, so we can show that uh, to the developers, to the foundation. Yeah, may maybe uh, just uh, briefly something about um, how to get it implemented on the Wikimedia wikis. Uh, we have recently filed a bug on the Wikimedia bug seller, which yeah. you can follow. Uh, maybe we could. Could you open it? Do you have the link? Um, there, are, there is now code review going on by Rome, and I think maybe a few things need to be fixed to make it work smoothly on the Wikimedia wikis. For instance, they have also a very old MySQL uh, version in use, so we need, might need to change some SQL statements and something. But uh, I think that's only a matter of a few weeks at most to get it done. Uh, the bigger matter is to get the code review done. So we have actually kind of an approval that the code is good for deployment. And uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, and um, what we need as well is a consensus from the community that this feature is actually needed. That's what the petition is for. Uh, so. I hope that many people will show up and say, yes, we want to have that. Uh, please <coughs> enable it. And then once the code review is done and the foundation is convinced, then we hope it will be eventually deployed. Okay. That's not long enough. Uh, I want to speak loud. Yeah. Um, as you may have been know, um, one of the strategic plans that the foundation has tried to also contains uh, information about the, about the level of watch list. Have you looked at that yet? Uh, no. Okay. Collaborative watch list? The, because there are two things. There is also a, something called global watch list. I also know. Okay. But, uh, so there is uh, two proposals on the strategic watch list. One for common watch list and one for global watch list. And I think that the common watch list is pretty much what this extension is doing. And I think the foundation is already convinced that this is needed. Uh, all that's needed is a little more efficiency and some uh, from code review, but I think this is already uh, far ahead uh, of being uh, deployed. It just needs to be more uh, fine-tuned, but I don't think convincing is really a problem. So. It depends on priority, though. I mean, it might be it might be desirable, but not necessarily. It is part of the, of the strategy plan, so. Well, it's on the strategy wiki. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are many things on the strategy wiki. But it has, there, there, there is a, there's a voting system on a strategic wiki. Yeah, I'll just ask you to make sure it's in the talk to maybe sure. five or weeks away. Okay. Go ahead, download it.
for the New York Union. Try to use it down the same. Why the condition, please? Yes, just one minute of work. And uh, we need to convince people that it's useful. I hope we convinced you that it is useful. That would be great if we could achieve that, we could have achieved that. So, um, thank you. Oh, yes. I just wanted to discuss between one of the other developers of this subject of the migration This idea about, uh, sorry, the nested sets, because it would probably make it more scalable for the capitalists. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll just do that face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you for coming and thank you for listening to us. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it.